Hello and welcome. And how's it going for you? I'm Barry Winbolt and this episode is about living with lockdown. Our freedom is at the top of the list of things in life we take for granted. Well, maybe not right at the top, because most of us take our health for granted. Or at least we do until something goes wrong with it. But right now, freedom is the concern on most people's minds. Or rather, lack of it. Or so it seems, because many of our usual freedoms are being taken away. Depending on where you live in the world, you're either under lockdown or it could be imminent in your area. This measure has been inflicted on us to help protect our physical health and that of the community. But it might seem that our mental health and well-being could now be at risk by the enforced confinement. But it doesn't have to be. There are several steps you can take to keep yourself occupied, emotionally stable and even on a positive track to self-improvement. We do still have control, though it may not seem like it. Though, of course, there are limitations to being stuck at home and it feels as though something has been taken away. But there's a lot you can do to help keep a sense of control and so bolster your morale. Your mental balance will be protected if you focus on what you can do rather than what you can't. Rather than seeing the changes as restrictive, Look for the possibilities they present, use the time wisely, and you can become psychologically stronger and more resourceful. I can't emphasize this point enough. Human beings manage to make themselves happy or unhappy, and we've got more ways of making ourselves unhappy than perhaps we realize. One of the ways, that people really upset themselves quite quickly is comparing or wishing and longing for that which they don't have. Comparing where they are now with where they could be, where they used to be or where they want to be. And when you do that, all you see is the gap, the difference. Whereas when you focus more on the present, on where you are now and make the most of that, I know I hate that phrase too, but really that's what we have to do, then you immediately have greater control over yourself. That lifts your spirits and it gives you more to do. It's a more constructive frame of mind, if you like. Even though being told to stay at home means some limitations, there's also the opportunity to invest in yourself. By taking care of yourself and those around you, and, for example, by learning something new, catching up on some of those things you never had time to do, and self-improvement. It's your choice. You can spend time worrying about the situation and sharing stories on social media about going stir-crazy, or you can realise that you do have control of the most important part of all this, you. So what do you do if you want to use your time constructively and keep yourself on the right side of that thin line that protects us from going over the edge? Here are some suggestions as to how you might go about it. The first is about your perspective. One of the main ingredients of human resilience is your attitude in a crisis. The ability to see things as they are without dramatising and exaggerating helps preserve emotional energy and shields us from worry. This is easy if you're a natural optimist, which I am. But what if your normal outlook is more negative? It's been said that there are two types of people in the world, optimists and pessimists. This is oversimplified, but it makes the point about an important difference in how we interpret events. Whereas optimists see possibility, pessimists tend to see the limitation. Both ways of interpreting events have their good points and their drawbacks. For example, 
Though optimism helps to keep your spirits up, taken too far it can become delusion. For pessimists, while expecting the worst helps them prepare and cope, if pessimism isn't kept in check, it can lead to overthinking, worry and even depression. Your perspective affects your attitude, and your attitude influences your beliefs. So do what you can to keep a grounded and balanced perspective of your situation. Avoid scaremongers. Whatever your outlook, protect yourself by staying away from scaremongering and catastrophizing. Don't binge on the news, and it also means avoiding negativity in all its forms. You need information, but keep it to a minimum. So this will mean avoiding the news, some people, and above all, be very selective with social media. After all, you're careful about what you eat and drink. Apply the same caution to what you consume through your eyes and ears. What you take in can be just as toxic and damaging as an unhealthy diet. Structure and routine are important too. Structuring your time and planning your routine gives a sense of control. R routines help you to manage your mental space because they reduce uncertainty and help you feel more confident. Structuring your time into both daily and weekly routines can establish a healthy pattern in your life and particularly during lockdown. Focusing your time like this leaves you less time to worry about what you can't change. If you're working from home, you already have a partial structure. Stick to it with regular work break times. Be disciplined about this and respect your timetable. The same applies even if you're not working. In either case, get up at a regular time each day, wash and dress as if you had to go out and face the world. Sleep is important too. It's vital for well-being and routine is a must. So stick to a regular bedtime and get up at the same time each morning. This applies to weekends too because sleeping in or binging on sleep will disrupt or disturb your sleep patterns. While your weekend timetable may be a little different from the weekdays, you shouldn't need more sleep. If you feel you do, then make bedtime a little earlier to catch up so that you wake feeling refreshed. Try half an hour at a time, and if that doesn't do it, go to bed an hour earlier. I know some people have a kind of taboo on going to bed at a reasonable time or an early time, but believe me, the research shows quite clearly that people really benefit from regular sleeping and waking times, and you shouldn't need an alarm clock, you shouldn't need to catch up if you're getting enough sleep. Another point is about exercise. Now that you can't go to the gym, there's still plenty you can do at home to keep yourself in shape and even improve your fitness. Exercise doesn't have to be vigorous and you don't need to beat your brains out. Regular yoga, tai chi, aerobics and dancing are all good for you. And if you're allowed out, then walk or run if those appeal to you. Take care of your relationships. Relationships need to be kept in good shape too. 24-7 living together can be stressful if you're not prepared for it, and stress can threaten even the healthiest of bonds. Harmonious and tolerant relationships don't happen by accident. You need to work at them. Talk to your partner and do nice things for each other. It's easy to become preoccupied with daily concerns and to overlook those you love. Establish shared routines for chores. You don't both have to do the same things, but there should be a balance which both of you think is fair. Give each other space, say different rooms or activities for a certain time each day. Above all, treat each other with compassion and tolerance, not just for them, but because it's better for your emotional health to feel positive towards others.
and then there's eating. Now there'd be a lot of that going on during lockdown, I guess. Take time and care in planning and preparing your meals. Regular meal times, preferably sitting at a table, are better for relationships, your digestion and your mental health. I was speaking to a Romanian psychologist some years ago. We were planning a course on stress management. And one of her top tips was that you should only eat with people you like. Well, that could be a bit of a challenge in some families, especially as lockdown wears on. But you get the drift. So take steps to ensure that you control your attitude and behaviour. If you want love, respect and understanding, you have to be prepared to give them too. To use your time constructively, consider learning something new. Develop an interest or a hobby. One of the great things about our connected world is that the possibilities are limitless. Many universities offer free courses and there's currently a boom in online learning. If this sort of study sounds too formal to you, then consider improving your practical skills like cooking, art, writing or music. If you have a particular talent or skill, you might even share your skills online and launch a course of your own. As with other activities, schedule regular learning sessions, just as you would if you were attending classes. This helps shape your day and also aids the learning process. Short, regular sessions are more beneficial and aid retention more than longer or more intense ones. Stay connected. Arrange virtual dates, meetups, book groups or study sessions. Planning these at a regular time each week will help others as well as you. Ask around, then organise it. Take charge and make it happen. If you're not confident enough to do it by yourself, then partner up and plan together. We're a social species and lack of contact will be hardest for some people. Plan to avoid isolation by scheduling regular contact with others and reach out and offer support to anyone you feel may be becoming isolated. Make time for fun. Board games, card games, playing music or learning to play a real or virtual instrument. You can do a lot on a computer these days. Think of zanier things, games you can play around the house or the apartment, hide and seek, a general knowledge quiz, a poetry contest or dancing. If your imagination isn't up to creating your diversions, there's no shortage of conventional entertainment. Stream a concert or plan a movie evening, for example. And finally, look ahead. This enforced lockdown may be terribly inconvenient, but it doesn't have to be all bad news. We will all be changed by this global crisis, but the restrictions offer time for reflection, insight, and even planning for some of the things you told yourself you would do when you had time or one day. Now may be a good time to reflect on how your life could be improved for the better. Once this is all over, you might even start planning for it. Things may never be normal again in the same way. And now might be a good time to learn from experience and to begin planning how you would like your life to be once freedom is returned to us. You've been listening to ideas to help you get a better handle on life. If you have any questions or suggestions for future topics I could cover, please email me at info at barrywinbolt.com. For now, this is me saying hang in there and take care of yourself. All the best. Bye for now.